So Batman, he's um, had a pretty interesting track record when it comes to film adaptations. Some have really set the bar, becoming one of the most daring and bold comic book films to date, while others have done things differently. But, um, this, this film in particular was, it was quite a game changer. Um, I already talked about how, um, a bit about Christopher Nolan's film style with, with films like Oppenheimer and Insomnia. So, we're gonna take a look at what he decided to do after Insomnia. Batman Begins, released in 2005 and starring Christian Bale, Michael Caine, and a whole bunch of other actors. This film got a lot of praise and performed really well at the box office. And is considered one of the best um, comic book origin, um, comic book films with like superhero origins in it. That is true. This film is just so like enthralling and it, let me get into it. Um, the filmmaking is just, once again, top tier from Nolan. He just, he, uh, it's so hard to explain this. Other people have explained it so much better than I have. Like, uh, take a look at our good, good old friend from High Top Films. He did a film about Batman Begins and described it way better than I do a lot of my film, a lot of the films that I review. But Nolan's filmmaking really shines here. How he uses so much practicality and knows just when to use CGI and visual effects. Uh, <laughs> the production design is also just so beautiful. It's beautiful. It's messy. It's grungy. I love it. Gotham just looks so... It, it looks like very grungy and dirty. A lot of people have given it a Blade Runner-esque, uh, or have kind of um, compared it to like Blade Runner. And I can definitely see that, even from someone who hasn't seen Blade Runner. Uh, and I just love all the kind of orange, dark orange, blue palettes we get throughout. Uh, the acting is just so great. Um, sorry if you hear that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know a film's gonna be good when you have not only Christopher Nolan directing amazing production design, but also when you have Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Liam Neeson, Ken Watanabe, Gary Oldman, put it all in the blender, and you've got this masterpiece. Bale's um, performance as Bruce Wayne is so compelling, getting to see his arc throughout the whole film. I was like so invested into it. But yeah, um, Bale just brings so much like depth and, and, and introspect to Bruce Wayne. And his Batman is also really, really good. Um, I'm often, I often flip between um, Christian Bale and Robert Patterson for like either best Batman or best Bruce Wayne, but I think I've come to the conclusion that it's like, while Bale does a really good job as Batman in this, I think he does a much better Bruce Wayne, and Patterson does a much better Batman. Because with Patterson, like with Patterson's Batman, he just does so much. Like he, he can just act with his eyes, and that's it. Bale's Bruce Wayne, I feel like, just gives more character than his Batman. But he still did a really good job as Batman. Uh. Michael Caine as Alfred, oh man. Talk about another perfect casting. He just, 
also brings so much to the character. Like, it, it's hard to, like, think of anyone else who could have done this role better than Michael Caine. And we've seen some other good ones, too, like um, Andy Serkis. Uh, Liam Neeson as Raj al Ghul was also very great. His monologues and some of his funny little lines, like one where he mentioned like theatricality, that got a, a good uh, chuckle out of me. <coughs> uh, okay, what else, what else? Oh yeah, um, Gary Oldman. Okay, you, you know a movie's gonna be good when Gary Oldman's in it. He does not disappoint. He, Gary Oldman's Gordon is like one of the heart, is like one of the, he's the heart of the, of not only just this film, but the whole trilogy. Um, as High Top, High Top said, um, I'll link it down below, uh, he put it best when he said, Bruce went, Bruce is the, is the hero Gotham deserves, but Gordon is the one Gotham needs. I just think that that makes so much sense. And it's just like how, like whenever we first see Gordon, like we already trust him. And it's just a great way of setup. I love it. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, there are other actors. Tom Wilkinson, Killian Murphy as Scarecrow, Ken Watanabe as the cover-up of Ra's al Ghul. They all do so terrific jobs. Killian especially, just... He, I love his... The psychoticness of of his performance as the Scarecrow. I think films like this, Inception and Oppenheimer, showcase some of Murphy's best performances. Oh, and 28 Days Later, which I highly recommend. Uh, I also just love, um, there are other little things that to me just, they're little things, but they go so hard. I think one of them is when Bruce says, bats frighten me. It's time my enemies share my fear. Because like, we never, like in all the other films, whether they were made or canceled, we never understood why, why does Bruce dress like a bat? We have it here. And the reason why is just so, it, I love it. I, I just, I just love it. I can't even explain why. I just, I, I just love it and it makes so much sense. And, uh, uh, I also mentioned how, like, Nolan knows when to use visual effects. Um, the visual effects in here, the CG, are really good. Like, with the, with the bats. Because, like, when I was watching the movie, I thought to myself, like, those bats look so real, yet it was with CGI. That's some really good visual effects there. If I had one complaint with Batman Begins, and it's one that a lot of people bring up, it's the quick cutting action. I think Nolan learned his lesson when he was making The Dark Knight, and um, he and the action in that, in that film, and rises seem to flow much better because of here I was just like thinking like I, I I tried paying I felt like I I felt like I paid attention to what was going on with the fight but it just these were flowing along too quickly I just feel like you could have hold up had like instead have fitting like 20, 20 20 shots like cramming 20 shots in there maybe you could have just like have 10 shots in there, have those fights like flow a bit, like have each shot flow a bit longer. I think that could have helped, but that's only a little complaint. And that obviously does not ruin the quality that Batman Begins has. Because let me tell you, it's going to be turning 20 years old next year, 
It's still one of the best comic book films I've ever seen. Bold as hell. Brilliantly acted. Masterfully directed. It just truly embodies how a comic book origin, or like how to do an origin story for like a superhero. Or just like Batman. Now, I've already seen The Dark Knight, so I'm very familiar. I'm like... I have it, like I watched it, like as a kid, and I have it every moment embroiled into my brain. Now, as for Dark Knight Rises, that's going to be an interesting rewatch. Why? Well, you'll just have to find out. <laughs>